a quick showcase of the new Pydantic integration that just landed in guardrails. Uh, so basically, if you have a Pydantic model and you want um, your LLM to generate some data that is valid given that Pydantic model, guardrails basically makes this like really trivially easy. Uh, so here I basically have a Pydantic model with a person and some attributes like name, age, and zip code. Um, each of them have some doc, doc strings associated with it, and there's also like some validators for each of these fields. So one of these validators, for example, is that the zip code should be in California, and for some reason, uh, you know, we care about that zip, co zip code not being 90210, like just for the purposes of this demo. Um, so I basically go and start with creating a rail spec given this model. So rail is uh, at the heart of guardrails and it basically allows you to specify uh, what output you want from a large language model and what to do in case that output like doesn't match the specification so for example in this case we want to make sure that we receive a list of three people where each person follows the pedantic model of the person that we defined above uh, and in case you know this data for some reason fails to match this pedantic uh, pedantic model then you know, we basically want to re-ask the large language model until we get some data that is valid. Um, so to use this spec, we create this guard class and we wrap our OpenAI call in the guard class. And this takes like just a second, but like uh, basically on the back end, what is happening is like multiple rounds of like re-asking the large language model, either until our budget runs out or we get a valid data. Uh, so here's the response that we end up getting. And we kind of see that there's like three people each um, each item in this list is a valid valid uh, person class and there's no zip codes that violate our validator. Uh, so I'm going to do this like quick step through that actually goes into the details of like what each LLM call kind of looks like. So here's the first call. So this basically just sends the initial prompt um, and you know contains like information about, uh, what schema we want our output to be in. So we kind of look at like the Pydantic model can, gets converted into the schema. Um, each, you know, the, the description of, the, uh, of each field is taken from the doc string, uh, auto compiled. Uh, and we also have like our validators just given as like helpful hints to the model and then some spiel about like how to format this, etc. cetera. Uh, this is the raw output from the large language model. And we see that unfortunately, you know, we have this like Beverly Hills zip code. And so when we validate this, we kind of like, you know, uh, create this re-ask object that tells guardrails to essentially re-ask the large language model once again. Um, so let's make another LLM API call. So that just kind of ran. So if we look at like what the output was this time around, we can kind of see that, you know, now we're only prompting the LLM to correct an output that was previously incorrect. Um, and you know, we tell it like the format and the schema that it should give us our response in. So this is the response that the LLM ends up generating. And we see that, okay, this time around, it's not a 90210 zip code. Um, and we kind of like add this and merge this with our previous responses. Um, so yeah, I hope this was helpful. This was basically how guardrails works under the hood by making repeated LLM calls and you know, doing like corrections. Um, and, and you can use this with your Pydantic models today. Thank you.